Welcome in everyone to episode 83. Slight, slight, slight delay on the episode. We do apologize. We had some uh, scheduling difficulties, but we are here now. This is the the double the double negative is about to come here for those listening. You might already know once you click on the episode. It's going to be a little bit short of an episode. We have some meetings we have to get to, unfortunately. Um, but that just means it's going to be more packed with content, right? It's like the CD Guela that Butters always talks about. The little fruit, right? Packed with flavor. This is this is all fruit, no seed. seed. Yeah, sixty five. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Very little actual fruit, but small. Uh, but anyway, I'm your host, Caleb Payne. Join my co-host, BD Chief Two. What's up? Good to be back, Caleb. Yeah, a shorter shorter one today, but we got a lot to talk about. So let's get in. We got a lot to talk about. Let's just let's just dive in. You know, let's just dive in with the questions because there's a lot going on here too. Um, so qu- questions from last episode or questions or comments. Uh, Omniaki says, excited to see you in Orlando, Speedy. Would be awesome to see you compete. Well, you say that until you watch him compete. Then you might be like, yeah, he's, hey, he's better behind the on. desk now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day, but I don't, I don't think it will be Orlando. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, DeFi E, not DeFi. DeFi E 250. De- De-fi. She's here with the comment. I'm sure I corrected Speedy as chief on my name pronunciation early on. But after a while, I felt like it would defy social norms if I corrected him again. You know what this reminds me of, Speedy? I, I think we're you, on the same page. Tell me. I don't think so, but okay, I, I will. Let's let's see. This reminds me of like a like an older generation person that like does not know how to pronounce someone's name, and they're so adamant about not pronouncing it correctly, no matter how many times you try to correct them. So at a certain point, you just give up. You're like. Ah, whatever that's just grandpa speedy like he just he just like that right like he 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 does he will never learn how to pronounce my name properly so they just give up on you <laughs> it's it's like my Is that what you're thinking like, uh no i wasn't thinking that but i do have an example uh my dad can't pronounce kanye so he says kane kane it's like <laughs> did kane west do something again I'm like yeah yeah kanye did something again yeah uh but no i i was thinking about the meta thing how you guys didn't correct me for so long when I tried to break down meta as an acronym. Dude, I, I, I'm I pretty sure me and Butters have corrected you multiple times. Nah. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So so for those that are listening, right, because I know some <laughs> other casters, I won't name names, I know other casters and commentators say this too. What did you think that meta stood for before, Speedy? Let's see it in the comments. <laughs> no, no, no. Meta, <laughs> meta is most effective tactics available. It is not though, right? It's a it's a false acronym. It's not a it's not an actual acronym. It's just a word. Meta is just it's literally just a word. It's not like a it's not like all caps with a bunch of periods between each letter. And this guy just came up with some random acronym from somewhere. Who knows where? <laughs> it's I mean, it does it not fit though. It kind of fits. Yeah, but it's a it's a it's not that's not what it means. You just someone just made that acronym. I don't know if you did or someone just made that acronym afterward. To make it into an acronym, even though it wasn't one, it doesn't stand for anything. It just I don't know. Somebody very smart must have come up with that. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> say what you want. You keep saying that, then you know. But every okay. no, no, I kid you not. Every time you're commentating, because you, we're usually like backstage with our with our casting partner when we're not commentating. Yeah. So when me and Butters are literally backstage in production, just like listening in on Speedy and his co commentator, regardless who it is. Uh, at the time, and he'll he used to say this like multiple times per regional or international. And every time you say it, me and Butters will be like, "Oh God!" I feel like this <laughs> this will piss off Butters. I feel like more than it piss off me, right? He's like, "Oh man, there goes Speedy again." Talk about this <laughs> like this like fake acronym. It's not a thing, Caleb. It's not. I was like, "You don't gotta tell me, Butters." Like I'm with you, right? Like he's sitting there googling every time. He's like, "I swear, look in Google, it doesn't say." I was like, "I, I know, I know, Butters." I've never seen him so peeved about anything else. It's actually kind of funny. Oh but my God. Um, I didn't know it triggered Butters. Now I might say it just to trigger him. But I think I think Butters and I came up with an agreement that we just not tell you so that you look like <laughs> a fool. <laughs> yeah. Dude, really funny. That's your really... punishment for spreading false information. It's oh to, my God. Misinformation. Public, yeah, misinformation. Yeah, exactly. I, I love this comment by Jimmy Bo. Still not sure how Caleb hasn't hasn't seen Step Brothers. I bought a copy of it for him for San Diego, but he was too busy whooping butt and being surrounded by paparazzi, so I didn't get a chance to give it to him. But I'm only a few hours up the California coast, so I'll get it to him soon. Love the podcast. Oh, appreciate it. It's going down like the Catalina White Mixer, Caleb. Come on. 
I I still don't get the reference, but I have been to Catalina Island. It's pretty nice, pretty nice place. Very <sighs> romantic. I would I would not go for more than a day or a weekend at most. So there's not too much to do. But uh, H ship five says you should give regionals a go, Speedy. Worlds 2023 Speedy versus Caleb. Great podcast, Dude. guys. But That'd be fun. That, if that happens, I'm like, dang, yo, they set me up with an easy bracket today. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, I, I remember my my prep for uh for Sylph Worlds. I remember, and I quote, Caleb said, "I just couldn't find a way to beat him when we." When we <laughs> hey, I, I didn't that. draft a team to be fair, but yeah, you were you were well prepped for that one. I had to, uh, okay, yeah, because going into Sylph Worlds, I don't know if we ever shared the story, but to go to Sylph Worlds, you have to like do well in Continentals, make top eight, and you have to win the top eight to qualify for Worlds. And mm-hmm. to qual and for that Continentals with like you know hundred plus people or whatever. Speedy lost his first round. And, like, you could lose pretty much two max, right, out of, like, a seven- or eight-round tournament, right? Two max. And even if you lose two, you're not guaranteed to lock in because it's, like, based on tiebreakers. And you lost your match because your your sound wasn't working, right? Like, you couldn't mm-hmm. – you listen to the fast move, like, um, sounds, and it wasn't working. Yeah. And so I remember when you posted about it in a group chat, I was, and I was like, I was like, I, I won my first round. I was like, oh, man. I was like, makes me feel that better sucks. about myself, at least. <laughs> like, yeah, like, that sucks for him, but uh, – <laughs> Oh well, oh well. And then you, yeah. you, you, that was the only round you lost. <laughs> I was like, "What?" I lost to Jay's fan round one. Oh, was that who it was? Okay, uh, yeah, I didn't battle him yeah. for a while actually until like years later. But yeah, Jay's yeah. fan. But um, but yeah, you came back from from. Uh, meanwhile, I think I won my first four rounds or first three rounds, mm-hmm. and then I started like kind of breaking even after that. But uh, Miguel says, "Speedy Scatter Bug is from." Kalos, not Paldea. Keep the great work. Oh, Miguel, so, I'm sorry. Dude, I, I feel like you keep saying different things are from Paldea, even though like they're not. You did that I with just the wish other they thing, were. too. Yeah, but they, I, they aren't. Because <laughs> people DM me, and I was just like, I didn't say it. I was like, it's speedy, right? Oh, mis- mis- misinformation speedy here. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to research my regions more. Yeah, speedy is fake news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and then uh, Arante says, "Hi, Speedy. It was great to hear you're a manga fan. Wh- what would uh, what would be your favorite Naruto uh, Sasuke uh, Sasuke scene? Are any of your K nine named uh, Karama. Kar- Karama, Karama? Dude, honestly, you should read this question. I, I haven't seen Naruto. <laughs> uh, thanks. Really enjoy the podcast." Yeah. Um, so yeah, not, not to get uh, too deep into the weeds here, but yeah, definitely do love manga Naruto Sasuke favorite scene. Um, I really felt like it was great in the fourth great Shinobi war when they teamed up and started to fight against Obito. Dude, I'm gonna take off my headphones. You wave at me because these are spoilers. I can't listen. Just just wave. You can say whatever, but just wave at the screen when you're ready. <laughs> uh, fourth great ninja war when they fought against you know who and madara uh really really cool to see them come together after so many uh years of being apart and being rivals uh yeah caleb's really not listening so i know you can't see this unless you're watching the youtube version but caleb really is not listening right now he's got his headphones off uh but yeah it was really great to see that and um yeah va- the final battle at the uh at the uh, valley was also insane but uh yeah it was really good okay I waved to the I'm camera. Just, uh, I'm just scratching my cat's chin while I was waiting. Dude, it's it's worth watching. Like honestly, if you if you watch it, watch ship it in. I recommend like that's the one without fillers, right? Finding a website where it tells you all the filler episodes and then just skipping those. Dude, here's my here's my biggest problem. Maybe people could say this is a red flag too, right? I have I have a problem. I have to watch every filler episode. I'm Why? like the kid, like when I was studying for school, I would have to read every word on the page. I can't skim read because I, I, for me, I'm like, I don't know what, how do I know to not read something if I don't know what it says, right? Same thing True. with, I mean, I guess fillers, they tell you which one's fillers, but I'm just like, what if I miss one little thing, right? Like I'm the person that like, I, if I'm late to movies, I hate it because I'm just like, if I'm yeah. five minutes late, I miss five crucial minutes, right? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, um. We, we talked about we talked but about I know Naruto's uh, very long too, so I need and there's a lot yeah. to comb through. A few weeks ago we talked about sitcoms versus like a sense of progression in a show. You know, it's part of the reason you like Yu-Gi-Oh! so much. Or not not Yu-Gi-Oh! Sorry, Digimon, right? Um, Digimon, I don't know yeah. where I don't know where Yu-Gi-Oh! came from. Anyways, Wait, Yu-Gi-Oh! did have some progression too, actually. It did. Because they actually I think he aged, I don't know. But 
the filler is kind of like a sitcom episode within the greater story. It's like the day to day, right? Like if you have a big mission that you go on, there's like, there's, you know, low, low times or like, you know, dull days in between the big missions. Mm. And that's when you have like your filler sitcom where everything basically like starts and then it resets back to the very beginning. And you learn more about the characters, sure, yeah. but it's essentially like a sitcom. Right, All the pieces are in place for the next episode. That's why I love Attack on Titan. There's no fillers, man. Yeah. Dude, you got to get on that, man. You and Butters. But uh, yeah, Scott Sandler says, long-time listener here since episode one. Oh, wow. That's, this is a big that one. Is a long time. Yeah. That's co- over a year. Wait, is that yeah. over two years, I feel like, right? Wow. Yeah, it's over two years. Before my time. It's, yeah, me and Zach started this in 2021, I think January. Yeah, yeah. You're the boomer time. now, Caleb. Before, <laughs> before my time, so, <laughs> <laughs> figure out how to spell, uh, pronounce the DeFi's name first, <laughs> and okay. then we'll talk. Okay. Um, so, opinion slash perspective on the second T segment from last week. So, you mentioned that people use rockers uh, and the like to gain an advantage in resources. This is obviously true. However, not everyone has access to the same resources. Caleb is a single person who has as much time as he wants to put into Pokemon Go through raid, GBL, or grinding. Using you as an example, Caleb, no hate, just love. Speedy is soon to be married and will have significantly less time than Caleb to go grind. That's true. You know, it's true. The single life does provide this to you um, to go uh, then Caleb to go grind, raid, GBL or what have you. Then there are those who have kids. So even less time to gather resources. So then does Caleb have an unfair advantage over, uh, over those that have kids or how, and how would that be fair as Caleb could in theory, go out and go get all the resources he needs to play in any format he wants. I think the players who want to be invested in this game but also have a life find ways to maximize their gameplay and leverage the advantages they do have. Not everyone can drop $100 for every new legendary that's uh, Master League viable or even have the time to do so. But they could buy a rocker and over the course of four to eight months build up the candy needed to make a Master League Pokemon. Just an opinion of a lover of the show and someone who likes to point out that we often only see one word or sentence in the 1,000 pages of that is a book of someone's life. Much love. Oh, I love that. That's a great example. Yeah, yeah I, I, that's a great quote. It's a, a to like to iterate uh, to reiterate Scott's point here. Um, I know some people that use rockers or defit and stuff, and uh, some of them have like hundreds of thousands of catches too, right? But they'll say like, "Look, I used to play the game much more, but I got four kids. I got a wife." I like work like a job, right? Like a with a yeah. lot of hours. I can't do this XL grind thing, right? Like when they drop level fifty, it's just like I can't physically do this XL grind thing because it's just incre- uh, it exponentially increased the grind for Pokemon Go, right? I feel like right before level fifty and XLs dropped, I was like pretty set, right? I don't know about you, but mm-hmm. I was like I got everything I I need for most part. Like I don't really, I I wasn't even spending dust much anymore because I was like yeah. I have everything made. I mean they may release new Pokemon every couple months. That might be PP relevant. I'll make it. But like it was so much cheaper back then. Like at most you're spending two hundred something dust, right? Two hundred fifty something mm-hmm. dust. Maybe the shadow version you spend like about three hundred K. But um, but that's it. And like the, the candy you should definitely have, right? Like the candy was never an issue, right? Like even legendaries you just dropped rare candies. But now you have mm-hmm. XLs, it's just like exponentially changed the grind and made the game less accessible. And okay. so I completely get it too, right? So I think uh, yeah, and this is got again made a great point. Now everyone could drop a hundred dollars for every new legendary, or even have the time to do so. That's the thing, right? Some of these big hardcore grinders from Master League, and I'm not one that by any means, they will grind so much dust or so so many raids. But the thing is, like, even if it was free to do all those remote raids, I don't know if I have the time or dedication to even do that many, let alone spend the money for it, right? Like, it's not yeah, even a exactly. money issue. It's like, do you have even the time? Or determination to do that and um yeah so again like it's for me like it's just how you play the game like it's just it is it is what it is you know i think again like the most egregious forms of this was when excels first dropped or when cough egregious got shadow claw right like yeah that was when it was like you could feel like the imbalance right of people using these kind of things but I think in most situations, it's not really that case, right? I guess maybe mm-hmm. once in a while you face like a Zerud and Master or something. But even these days, like you can make Zeruds and Meloetas and Mythicals low 50s like pretty pretty cleanly, I guess, right? Um, yeah. 
combination of in-person raids, you know, walking and then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the for body Excels. body effect yeah. and everything else for Excels. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you, Scott. I, I think it's, it's tough to know uh, exactly what somebody's situation is. And I, and I am all about more people playing the game. I think we can all agree on that. Like we want more people to pick it up. It uh, it's, it's sad when people put down the game uh, because mm -hmm. they feel like it's inaccessible or because they, they have a passion for it, but they don't have the time anymore. And, you know, not to like say this goes for everything in life, but it's all about uh, resource allocation, time allocation. And I know like as you get older and you get more responsibilities, there are a lot less, there's a lot less time to do the things you really want to do. Um, yeah. To, to my point that I made last week, I just feel like if you do have those kilometers, you just got to own it and you just got to own what comes with that kind of uh, that kind of metric on your account. Like I'm not trying to shame people for doing it, but it's some people will, I won't mm -hmm. shame them for it, but like, at the same time, you know, everyone can see it. It's just kind of out there. And yeah. um, I'd rather people play the game than not play the game in general. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Ryan Colgrove, a.k.a. RC Cola, <laughs> said, I almost ran Amphros in San Diego in case I played Caleb so I could have an opportunity to take a game off him. But I thought, uh, I thought it over, and it wasn't worth the meme because I probably wouldn't play Caleb and definitely wouldn't go all the way with it. But Quagsire has play. If the bet was that, I'd have run Quagsire. Hey, look, you can go run Quagsire in Orlando, or anyone can, right? If you if you win a regional with Quagsire, I will transfer <laughs> my Bastiat. Look, and we'll get into this later because uh, Liverpool did happen, and so did yep. run Amphros. But uh, yo, I I love the confidence people have, but I think there's it takes it takes a level of delusion as well to think you can win a regional in general, let alone one with a Pokemon that's so unviable, right? But we'll, we'll talk more into that. We'll talk uh, okay. more about that more. Mike Daniel says, Niantic uh, can build in caps for spinning stops, so it shouldn't be that hard to build in caps for kilometers per day. Actually, Mike, um, I believe there is. I don't know what it is, right? Uh, because I don't defit or whatever, but I there is some type of cap, I believe. Because I know people that do defit that have said it, or people that know a few that defit, there is some cap, but the cap mm -hmm. is like pretty ridiculous. I think like it's still not walkable. Actually, I, they they should, theoretically should probably lower the cap. Um, I think this really comes up whenever we have the Halloween event where you get like double, like twice amount of XL, or like you have a chance for getting a guaranteed XL for every time you walk, and you end up getting like double yeah. the amount, uh, because yeah. most of the time you get XL anyway. And there's like a essentially a cap on like how much excess you could gain a day essentially because of that um, kilometer cap, uh, but it's something atrociously high. <laughs> so it uh yeah so maybe if they lower it, it would be a more balanced playing field, right? Because like yeah, I mean, theoretically, I feel like you no person can theoretically walk a hundred kilometers a day consistently, right? Yeah, I, it's a lot. I don't know. Um, it is for me. Yeah. Um, again, so, but like, I, I think the cap is higher than that. <laughs> is is yeah. is my guess? Yeah. Sure. Alex Baker says personally, I think boosting your mileage steps with any means other than authentic exercise is cheating. However, I would not necessarily advocate for a night to do anything about it or suggest for people to witch hunt or dogpile on someone who uses an Ill illegitimate method of spiking their kilometer count. If someone wants to go through whatever mental gymnastics to justify the action, that's on them. At the end of the day. All it would cost is a lower level of respect from an anonymous person like me, and that's it. I'm not arrogant enough to think that losing my respect would really make a difference to another person, but I'm just sharing how I feel about the topic. Well, that's interesting. As for Kale's point about a lot of people violating in terms of service uh, in some way, I get that point, but there truly are also a ton of people who try and succeed and play the game beyond reproach. No all counts, no spoofing, no rocket, etc. Yeah, uh, very fair. I think that's yeah. those are very solid points. Um, and I agree with those, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of pretty legit players, too. I think my point was more so last week. Um, I'm not saying this person even disagrees with me on it, but like, there, there are times where like you're getting like spillover effect of people that are breaking terms of service, right? Like, back mm -hmm. uh, before we had like campfire, like, if you're doing like a raid from somewhere, you might not know, it's just the person informing of it knows because they use like a map, right? Or like, someone mm -hmm. says, Hey, there's a there's a hundo Ralts down the street, right? Did they find it themselves or were they coming mm -hmm. over to this area? Cause you know, and you don't know, or maybe you don't question it or maybe they'll lie or maybe you just catch it, whatever. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I think there was a video of trainer tips. It definitely was when he was in Singapore 
and they were using maps there, and it was a hundo Ralts. And so he mm. just, I think they all use like go pluses wherever to try to catch it as like a fun little challenge. But for, I remember him saying like, I don't even care if I use a go plus for this because like technically it's a mapped hundo. So like yeah. if it runs on me, like no biggie, right? Like it's not really something we found organically. Um, but again, like those kind of situations, like like is Trader Tips cheating? I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's maybe yeah. uh, how you define that is like weird, right? Again, to me, I don't really care too much about it. But uh, what I'm saying is, like, there's a lot of spillover effect, and I don't think, um, like, how someone defines cheating is, like, so subjective because of it, right? It doesn't really matter yeah. to me specifically in that regard, but that uh, was kind of an example. Yeah. But, yeah. And to, and to Alex's point, like, with the dogpiling and the witch hunting, I mean, I've seen uh, – Caleb, you've actually seen this as well because we were both at the same event. I've seen, like, friendships, relationships uh, just destroyed overnight when uh cheating is exposed mm -hmm. and i've seen people just who who maybe like they came together because they played pokemon go but then they developed legitimate friendships and formed bonds with people just have that totally severed just in an instant mm -hmm. uh and and losing that community and that that sense of um like you belong to a group of people even if you just have one shared interest i think that's really tough mentally on people so i'm never for I'm, i never advocate for people taking justice into their own hands, you know, Batman style and saying, Oh, I have evidence of so-and-so. So let's exile them and put mm -hmm. them on an Island somewhere and make them feel alone and desperate. You know, I, I never, I never think that's the right approach. So your discussion about self-policing, I think is also an important one to have Alex. Uh, like I said, if you got the kilometers, you just got to own it, but I will never advocate for somebody shaming someone or, or, mm -hmm. you know, talking down to them or exiling them for it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was why the Dancing Rob tweet last week was weird because it was like he posted a kilometer, so it was just like it was like a thinking phase. I was like, huh, it almost seems like you're kind of putting them on blast a little bit. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. you put on the name, but then you go into this whole thing about like how it's not cheating. So it was it was a it was a very weird series of events. But anyway, we talked plenty about that. So if you were confused about what we we're talking about, just listen to our last week's second T segment. Uh, that being said, uh, before we go into the the events coming up, we got oh yeah, we got breeze through this, but real quick, Liverpool Regionals, right? Congrats to Human yeah. Catcher Bug, right? Yes. Really impressive. Shadow Charizard, really good. I think honestly, and this is my own prediction, that's it for Shadow Charizard for the near foreseeable <laughs> future. And it's not it's nothing against Human Catcher Bug or anything. I mean, he played great. the The biggest issue is um, Shadow Lone Nine Tails. We'll get more into that later, right? I think that's Ooh, actually going okay. to neutralize that utility I, it still could work i just don't think it'll be like this was like the perfect time to use it i think right like i yeah. think he found a perfect moment and dude honestly winning a regional with shadow charizard that's impressive right it's i probably wouldn't have bet my bastion on that one but still that's still shocking right again like these things like i'm, I'm all for it right this yeah this man was down oh and two in the winner's finals best of th best of five and he decides to bring in Shadow Charizard in games three and four into an opponent that had Galarian Stumpfus, Lantern, Dunsparce, right, with Rockside as well, and a Surf Wild Charged Mute. You have four bad matchups with yes. Shadow Charizard, and this guy brought it in games three and four and destroyed his opponent to the point where the opponent was so scared of Shadow Charizard in game five, and he didn't even bring him for game five, right? He reverse swept this guy. It was incredible. It was wild. And yes. he didn't bring Shadow Charizard like that often, but the times he brought it was just immaculate. Yeah, it was, it was very impressive. Um, so, so congrats to him, uh, and then congrats to Potamon for the second place finish as well. Really young, by the way. I think 15 years old, too, from Spain. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. uh, like we mentioned last episode, Z's wireless, right, was was trying to run the <laughs> Ampharos. It wasn't even the Shadow Ampharos, actually. It was the non-Shadow with Focus Blast, Brutal Swing. And mm -hmm. um, I think I saw his Twitter post after saying, like, he kind of wish he brought it more, right? Um, not less. Uh, but it we did see really it on good. stream. We did see on stream a couple times, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, it, uh, I will say, too, for... Look, the... It's not, it, yo. Know, people think I'm sweating here, right? When someone makes top eight, I don't think people understand how hard it is to win a regional or international. In fact, there's only a few people in the world that can even say they've done that, and they yeah. know how hard it is. It is not easy. It's not easy to do that with a full meta team making the most perfect plays you can. Right? You can still lose. So to do so to try to win one with something like an Ampharos or Quagsire is beyond hard. I, that's why I don't 
I'm not sweating. Like, I'll transfer my Bastion, yeah. right? I'll transfer my XL Bastion. You think I'm talking about some other Bastion? I'll transfer the XL Bastion. Yeah, you don't you don't believe it? I'll transfer the one I use, right? But the thing is, it, dude, I'm telling you, it's not going to happen because it is so hard, right? And it, it and this is like this is the separation between like the top like point zero 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 one percent of top tier battlers and the ones that aren't in that range, which is the majority of people, is recognizing, right? I'm not even <laughs> saying I'm in that category. I'm just saying because I'm not bringing no Ampharos, right? I do a win a regional, right? I just make I, getting second place is hard enough, right? Like winning a regional. That, that was the thing. It's not. Someone's like, oh, wait, wait, is he transferred because he made top eight or it was like top 16, whatever it was in Liverpool? I was like, no. I was like, dude, I'm not saying you can't do that. Like, yeah, great place from C's Wilds. But like, winning it? There's only a few more regionals left, man. That is what it is. I think there's two more left, right? Orlando and um, Bacho. Oh, oh, and then OCIC. Yeah. At the international. Oh, yeah. Until, yeah, until yeah. your time limit is up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Until March 1st. Yeah. So, best of know. luck best of luck you know and like i said if you win it all i'm happy for you I, i'm a man of my word but here's the thing it's just it's hard <laughs> it's hard i mean i don't know how how many people are gonna be at botram and i think uh Z's wise is gonna bring that again so maybe but even if like a small tournament yeah not easy, not easy. yeah i don't know um yeah i will make the point that uh Z's wireless should have brought the amphros in his decisive game three because his opponent had a knocked out registeel back line and his Ampharos was brutal swing and focus blast. So like he had almost everything yeah, he needed, but, but he brought Trevenant instead, right? Also, to be fair, he doesn't win game two if he doesn't land that focus blast. I don't know why a mind joke didn't shield a potential focus dude, blast, but dude. you're just you're just setting yourself up to get memed on. But you know, he <laughs> did he didn't end up winning it though. So yeah. thank you for keeping the Bastion alive. <laughs> yeah. I, I plugged in a little a little insert here for the tweet, but uh it looks like human catcher bug went twenty and two in individual games along his way to becoming the Liverpool champion. So the two games that you talked about, what? the two losses he had, those were his only two game Dude, losses. that's actually wild. Dude, that's an incredible run. Insane. Dude, what? Yeah, yeah. that is super, that's very tough. And Just also, it was like the largest regional, or largest tournament in general, 160. 160 they, they increased the cap from 128. Yeah, dude, it's uh, busted, busted. Yeah. If super, you're listening to this, busted. Sign up for Orlando. It's also a big one. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make a note of that too. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's pretty. That's pretty. Yeah, yeah. Sign up for Orlando. Orlando has a 256 cap. Um, but anyway, real quick, Lunar New Year events. I thought it was fine. Uh, dude, the the quest for freaking combies in Paris, or, or, or was it Paris? Yeah, like, it, it was no. both. It was. It was like. It was like nowhere. What yeah. the heck? Dude, I, I, I was stacked. like, I, I saw like two. I stacked you eight open of them. Your gifts and set, huh? I stacked yeah. eight. I only got yeah, eight. It's like it's like barely. Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, dude, that was such a missed opportunity, man. And it wasn't yeah. even easy question to do because you had to trade with someone. It's not like you could just yes. go and trade while you're grinding. You have to come, like you have to go and like find someone to trade with. Like you, yeah. you, you can't like hold like like you can't do ten of them in a row while you walk around as you're with someone, right? Yeah. I, I so so I, I had to time it to where I was spinning all the stops and I was you know clearing all the other research, you know stacking random stuff, getting you know pokeballs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then my last loop, I would spin the trade of Pokemon stops, and then I have to like go home, do trades, and then like come back out the next day. It was it was tough. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was it was. Um, but anyway, that was my thing. I mean, otherwise it's fine. But I, I like the double. Dust. I like that you could choose a different path, and I, I did double dust myself. Too. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 Um. Let's just skip the primal reversion thing for now because we could talk about that next week. We're running low sure. on time, but we got crackling voltage and rocket takeover. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see it on the screen uh, right about now. But um, so the most exciting part about this, and we can talk more about crackling voltage later as well. I guess that's about to happen tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow. starting tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're recording this on 26. Um, but a bunch of electric Pokemon. Um, we have the new shiny debut of uh, Hel Helio Tile, which is like yeah. not really useful for anything, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> um, and a bunch of electric Pokemon, but uh, we'll still have Tapu Koko in raids, but Reggie Steel will be coming in raids too from February 1st to February 8th. So great time to grind out Reggie Steels. I'm also going to grind out more because I, I want to try to build a second one for Ultra League so that I don't have to nice. like change all, like TM off the Zach Cannon. Um, I don't really have one to power up either, so it's good to have some to re-roll with people. And then we have Mega Gengar, Mega Aerodactyl as well, um, mm -hmm. and Mega Raids. Um, nothing super wild here, but the big thing is this Team Rocket 
uh, Team Go Rocket Takeover. That's yeah, also happening from go. February 1st to February 5th at midnight Wednesday, February 1st. So that's going to be a big one. Shadow Red Seal is making their debut. Dude, save your Rocket Radar, man. It's not worth it. That's what I'm saying. I, I originally was even going to get one just in case. Dude, the, the, you got to think about the odds here. Getting one that's good IVs, really, really low. All right, obviously, some people are going to post on Twitter, like, ah, like a great, like, rank one of course. or whatever, something, right? Rank one shadow or, like, really high rank shadow. But the odds are not in your favor, and you can't re-roll them, right? So, if you get, like, a 15-0-0 Registeel, what, are you going to hit, like, a lock-on breakpoint? Like, it's not worth it, you know? It's not worth it. But here's the other thing, too. Shadow Registeel loses a lot of matchups, unfortunately. Yes. Um, I think there's, uh, so it compared to regular one, cause the extra damage, like, it's not like you're doing extra lock on damage, right? So and if you are, it's like not that much. All right. So here, here's there's a couple of pros and cons too. I saw this from somewhere. Um, I actually don't even know where, but, um, but if you run a shadow red seal over the regular red, red seal, the shadow red seal, you gain the zero shield matchup against Toxicroak. You can one shot it with Zap Cannon, right? Kind of nice. The one shield matchup versus Sableye. So maybe Zap Cannon and a few lock ons, right? You can finish that off. Um, and then you win the Shadow Victory Bell with one shield and two shield matchup, right? <laughs> okay, that's fine. Those three three things you gain. Here's what you lose. Zero shield Deoxys Defense. Zero shield Frost Last. Zero shield Alone Marowak. Zero shield Shadow Nidal Queen. Zero shields uh, and two shield Sableye. One and two shield Altaria. You're losing the Altaria in a one and two shields. Yikes. Lantern in the one shield. Obstacle in the one shield. Scrafty in the one shield. Umbreon in the one shield. And the two shield. I mean, look. I mean, unless you're like me, you're not supposed to lose two shield Umbreon, right? But uh, if you don't get a deep buff. And Venus run the one <laughs> shield. And Shadow Wall Rain in the two shield scenario. Dude, you're losing so many matchups and more. And here's the thing. Your IVs are probably going to be trash too. Save yeah. your Giovanni radar. Bank it for something else. Uh, I think Sh uh, Shadow Regirock might be really good, though, is what some people said. So that might be a good one. And also, you're spamming off more moves. Mm -hmm. So that might be one that uh, is worth saving Radar Short. This is my yeah, well so I, I want to talk like about how Go Battle League is, is more closely aligning with the seasons in the game. Mm -hmm. So this Crackling Voltage event was just announced, and we already knew that Electric Cup was coming up in GBL. Mm -hmm. So I think that what we can start to do is like look at the future GBL Cups and get an idea of what event is coming next, which is actually pretty cool. Right, because yeah. then it allows us to predict things a little bit better. Um, and second, to your point, this is the first of the Shadow Reggies, right? Reggie Steel. Mm -hmm. Um, I know a lot of people have already plugged this in the Sims, but Reggie Rock as a Shadow actually looks really solid. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you right now, Caleb, I'm going for one of these Reggie Steels. If it sucks, it sucks, whatever. But I definitely want to save my radars for Shadow Reggie Rock. I just don't know when it's coming, and I don't mm -hmm. see any Rock events in GBL, so it might not be for a while. Yeah, but it probably should be the next one. That one or uh, Reg Ice, right? Reg Ice should be pretty yeah, underwhelming, it's too. one of the three. Yeah. Uh, so, hey, at least you get Reggie Lecky. Well, sure. Is, is that good? I mean, that this would have been the perfect event for because of uh, the Voltage event. <laughs> oh, dude, but we, you're we right. We still might be a little bit farther away from that, yeah. Um. Anyway, if you if you want to, go for it, right? Like, if you get a great spread, sure. Um. I personally would rather save my radar here i originally really was going to do one but i thought about some more i'm like what am i doing this for, what am I doing this for? <laughs> like you know what you all can school me later five years from now when like somehow your sh the shadow reggie steel is preferable but like I, I already know like the odds of me getting a good iv one is super low and you can't change ivs on these things right you can't re-roll yeah. them you can't do anything even if you can re-roll it once like your odds of getting a good one still low how many how many reggie steels have people re-rolled and got a good one right i've re-rolled so True. many before i got my good one right so is what it is. But anyway, uh, event bonus. So obviously, Team Rockets will be spawning more often in Pokestops and Balloons. And you can use the Charge TM to TM away shadow, uh, Frustration on your Shadow Pokemon. Please do this, right? You got like five days to do this. It'll be worth it. Don't be like, you know, what's his name? Don't be like Purple Kyogre that had a shady, Shadow Teddy Ursa for like years and did TM it, right? Just TM everything you got. That's good. right? You never know. One of everything. And then new Shadow Pokemon are doing it. So here's the cool thing. Sierra, Cliff, mm -hmm. and Arlo, we don't even know what their Shadow Pokemon is. Typically speaking, though, their Pokemon that we've already had, they're just new shiny forms of it. So we'll see. I first want Shadow Lapras back again. but uh, Me too. Know. Yeah, yeah. That, one's, that one's a good one. Um, Maybe Shadow Sfeel. Shadow Sfeel might be a one because they don't have the shiny version of that. Um, But the new ones, Shadow Alolan Bulpix. That's huge. Ooh, Shadow Spoinks, yes. Shadow Blitzel, Shadow Joltik. Joltik and Vulpix are the big winners. They said and more. 
Um, but mm-hmm. I, I think it's, and I think those are just the only new ones, I guess. And more might just be the other stuff in the ro- regular rotation. Hopefully, they get almost see, that back. I, I did see Pokeminers posted that Shadow Pita was also in the code. Mm. Well, it's probably so a good maybe. reason why they didn't promote that one. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, the 12 kilometer eggs are what is, whatever it is. But anyway, um, here's the big, big one, right? Y'all heard it first if you didn't hear it from anywhere else. If you did, then uh, whatever. But um, but if you hear it here first, you, you can credit me later. Shadow, Alolan Ninetales with Powder Snow, Weather Ball, can beat Galarian Stumpfist in the two shield scenario if you have one Powder Snow advantage. So if you safe swap that Shadow Alolan Ninetales and they counter swap with a Galarian Stumpfist right away, you win that matchup in two shields. Lock it into this the ain't twos. no this ain't no like swag spread like Noctow. You need to land Shadow Balls and they need to not shield the Shadow Ball situation. You go straight Weather Ball, easy peasy. You win against a high rank Galarian Stumpfist. You win against a low rank Galarian Stumpfist. You just win that matchup, which is huge because you can flip that matchup. And you could get switch advantage if you need to in so many situations. But I think this also makes Lantern really strong too because you know it's just another yeah. target for Lantern. So of course you could also run the charm variation and with the charm nerf, um, this version still might be pretty solid. So you yeah. have some options here, right? There's different options. Obviously the charm version is going to beat the powder snow version too. So you can run triple shadow charm now. Granbull, oh Gardevoir, gosh. and Ninetales. Dude, you're always able to run triple shadow charm. It just depends on what you want. You can run Charm Gallade, Sh- Shadow Gallade. Charm Gallade, true. Charm uh, what was that thing called? The thing in um Willpower. The uh Lipard? Right, oh, Lipard, Lipard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Charm true. Lipard, but they're oh trash. God. Don't don't be yeah, like that. not very good. Being dark like with charm that. is a weird, weird place to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was beating it with fighters. Um, but uh, yeah. So that's a big one. Low and Volpix. So for Orlando, right? Because that's going to be the first yeah. regional spawns. Yo, you got a couple of days to grind this out. Uh, honestly, though, even if you're not competing in a regional, you should grind it out as many. Uh, Alolan Vulpix stops you can in those five yeah. days because you can't TM away the frustration later, right? Until yes. like months from now. Who knows when? So, Agreed. yeah. So we get like Regis or Reggie Rock and Rockets. So, so I, that's I know like, I, I know we're like mainly focused on play Pokemon, but I think that if you are lucky enough to get a Shadow Hondo Joltik, Shadow Galvantula and Ultra League is also going to be an absolute monster. Yeah. Again, the tough part about that is the IVs, right? Because you need like a hundo. Yeah. So. Yeah. Shadow Galvan Great League does pick up Kofagrigus, though, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that's that's an interesting one, too, because Galvantula, you pretty much are dumping shields into it anyway. So, like, does the Shadow form really hurt that much? Probably not, right? So, I think uh, it could be an interesting one. But again, I think those are the two most interesting ones, especially that bull picks. And, you know. Yeah. Reggie Steel, I feel like it's like the the they baited you with the hype, you know. Everyone's like, "Whoa, snap, <laughs> Shadow Reggie Steel!" But if you think about it, you're like, "What's the Shadow Damage really gonna do for me?" Right? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Like I'm not one shotting Galarian Stumpfist, right? But plus, like I'm getting one shot by those earthquakes at this point, you know. So yeah, yeah. Saw your saw your Reggie Steel take a lot of earthquakes in San Diego. It, just imagine that damage, like plus twenty percent additional. It's just too much. Yeah. It's too much. I can't be doing that catch yeah. catch earthquake on my red steel strategy anymore. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know who beat the exactly. Menchim in zero shields now. Yeah, you might, you might. I don't know. The counters will still add maybe. up pretty quick. Yeah, maybe. Pretty quick. Pretty quick. Um anyway, so that's about that for that event. So it's a good one. Uh maybe we'll see the save the T segment for next time. But quick GPL update too. What's what's the ELO at right now, Speedius Chief? Yeah, like well, we I all go- wanna know. I go multiple days without playing my sets uh, at a time. All right, I mean, you know, remember the 20... comment earlier about like, yeah. like, oh, Caleb has time because he's, you know, he's not married. He's blah blah blah. Yeah. But the thing is, your fiance hit legend, so like, so she it, did it, it, on the same boat. She should have the same priorities, right? But she could do it. Like, no, she crushed on? it. She crushed what's it. What's going sure. on here? Uh, you know? so, so I'm at twenty eight thirty five on the okay. last, the last push here. Might do a stream uh, today actually and see if I can get there, but we'll see. You go and climb 200 points in a day? <laughs> you Dude, you do a legend not? stream at the 2800 range? Why not? Man, we know this guy I'm has been it doing easy. it for a while. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. You know, it was funny. I was watching my friend Palmer's Updo battles. Someone else that I previously had a race to legend bet. Also someone that oh, I I didn't even that. hit legend that season. So I was just like, yeah, yeah. I'm sweating for nothing here. 
<laughs> but he was battling the twenty three hundreds, right? <laughs> and and uh and and he be like, Cal, you got you got to hear about this play, man. I led this into this, this and this. I stole one. I was like, dude. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like anything that happened, right? Like it's, a lot could happen in that elo range. But here here's the thing too, right? No hand I went in that elo range. But he'd be like, he was streaming his battles to Discord. And I was just watching. I wasn't even coaching. I was just watching. And he's like, yeah. He's like. Like, why would they do this? I was like, I was like, dude, I don't know. Like, maybe they don't know their counts, right? Like, <laughs> but then, but here's the funny part. Then he's just making obvious misplays. So like, he doesn't get to another charge move, and he's still throwing his charge move. I was like, dude, you just wing attack down. Like, you're going to throw here by not fast moving, and he throws right. And I'm just laughing. I was like, yo, I bet that guy's telling his friends, like, yo, can you imagine this fool not wing attacking me down? Like, he don't know anything either. <laughs> Right, right. So meanwhile, P- Polly's talking crap, but the other other trainers also talking crap. Yeah, yeah. Dude. At the end of the day, I was like, maybe you're in the right yellow range. <laughs> <laughs> driver, that's driver, just... not car. <laughs> that's exactly. I did say that. I did say that. Yeah, I did say that. He's running a oh, Metacham, God. Sableye, and Shadow Charizard. And I was like, what do you? I think, no, sorry, no, I no. Think... Metacham, yeah. Frostlass, Shadow Charizard. Oh. I was like, oh. what do you do against a Sableye lead? And he did. He definitely ran into a Sableye lead. Here's the wild part. He ran as a save wide lead. Obviously, he sacked the Metacham. He came in with his Frost Slash. I was like, why don't you just come in with Shadow Charizard? Like, you yeah, have to you shield need... this anyway. You're going, you're doing, like, just Powder Snow damage. Like, Shadow Charizard is going to hit harder. He's, like, so Energy in his head. Like, what if they have yeah. a Lantern in the back? I was like, well, what if they don't? Like, the Lantern's going to beat your Frost Slash and Charizard. Like, what do you, what's, yeah, yeah. what's that energy? Like, I think he's hoping, like, I Powder Stone down, they come in Lantern. I weaken the Lantern enough so the Charizard can sweep later. Like, somehow take out the Lantern. You know, I don't know. It was something weird. I was like, just have two shields. <laughs> like, it, it oh. sounds like somebody needs to sign up for Caleb's Patreon. So it sounds like, do you know it, man? I was about, I mean, <laughs> I was going to, I got my work cut out for me at that for that one. But, oh, um, Polly. Anyway, good times, good times. Can't, I can't believe these are the bets I'm making with people. <laughs> uh, what you think of a bet for next season, though? Yeah, we should. We still have a, um, what you, what you we're thinking? still a month out. We got we got people talking about bleaching hair and stuff. Man, yeah, that's, that's pretty true. wild. That's pretty wild. That's you true. need to be compensating something big on this one if that's the case. I'm not opposed yeah. to it, but what about this? What if I get like a perm? I can't I can't gel my hair back anymore if I get a perm, right? That's true. It's true. It'd be all it'd be curly, curly, Probably as heck. curly, curly. I don't know. I, I I have this this vision of a blonde Caleb, a bleach blonde Caleb, and it's like you gotta win a bet first. Hilarious. Come on now, let's 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 like let's it's let's be hilarious. real here. First to legend next season, you you yeah you know now right? You could start playing your sets on day one, right? No no more <laughs> skipping for like a month straight, right? Uh, uh, uh it's pretty simple, right? Mm, Cut and dry. No no no. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> you better think about the punishment you're about to do because I'm not, I'm not losing these. <laughs> we we still we still got to get through our our t-shirt, man. I think everybody's. Oh yeah, everybody's I got one kind of design. design. Yeah, I got that's yeah. my to do list. So we shall see. We shall see. Yeah, I'll work I mean, on that. you got limited pictures to work with because as everyone who's watching the YouTube can see, beard's back. Three weeks. for now. For now. For now. <laughs> for now. Hey, man. Don't worry, y'all. At, I got when it comes back fully, it's permanent. <laughs> has to be surgically removed that's not gonna happen maybe we'll we'll we'll, we'll do a beer tattoo for you <laughs> no, I, can, you I can just dye it white you know how people you know how people do like yeah 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 bleach your beard <laughs> bleach the beard white oh yeah your fiance will be begging you to shave it off after that <laughs> she would have never thought right <laughs> oh my god i'm that's, gonna go that's... full that's Professor how that's Turo. how wild these bets are to the point where you want to shave. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did see a video of some guy he bleached his beard and his hair like and then he dyed it all purple. It was really weird. It was a purple? big beard. Yeah, he was like a Viking looking dude and he he had like a thick beard and everyone in the comments was like, "Why would you ruin your beard like this?" Yeah, I saw it on Instagram. He bleached it all and then he dyed his hair purple. Couldn't be me. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Nah, Maybe the per- next purple. bet is you don't shave anything for like you oh. don't trim. You know, like you just like Dude. you go like full on like Dumbledore. <laughs> I, I would be caveman. It'd be it'd be coming out my cheeks. It'd be coming down my neck. I know. Caveman. I know. You'll be yeah. like the the wolf man. You know, like yeah, like, yeah. It's just like so much hair. Yeah, yeah. Werewolf Bigfoot in London. <laughs> Bigfoot. 
Yeah. Yeah. Big speedy. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Speediest cheap three. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, that, that I think it's something good for you all, you know. I'm not sure like, I could do that. There's definitely Let's less see. people rooting for me to dye bleach my hair than for people to do whatever. I mean, I'm not opposed to it. It's just like the problem with bleaching my hair is like when it grows back, like, my hair's like black, so like the discrepancy is so big. It's, it's gonna be a, hilarious. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna do something. I don't know. You, what if I just dye it? it some colors? Like you, I, I, when I dye my hair, I have to bleach it first, right? Because it's so say, dark. So I had to you bleach, bleach it, it blonde, and then after like two months, you just dye it all black, and then it grows black anyway. Oh, so. dude, that's so bad. That's so that's bad for the hair. <laughs> my towels are gonna be like charcoal. I don't know. I have dyed my hair before in the past. But it was like yeah, what color? It's just oh, like light brown. brown. Yeah, everyone thought it was Korean. Like a lot of Koreans saw it was Korean, so they were like bowing to me and speaking to me in Korean. I was like, I don't know Korean, <laughs> but I was just like, what do I do? I don't want to be like rude, right? It's not just yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, but you're not yeah. supposed to do that. It's it's like a sign of respect. Like you, you like they bow to people they think are older. And I was like a freshman uh, in college, and these other colleges. Oh. I was like, well, one, I'm like, I just got here, so I'm definitely not older than you. But but I think they're doing it out of sign of respect just in case, right? Because they don't. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also like, so, I'm not even Korean. <laughs> so so Caleb dyed his hair one time, and he was mistaken for an old Korean man. Uh, older so, yeah i didn't even look that old i was pretty are. young too. i was like waste i was like 30 pounds lighter yeah and, and here's the thing um uh back then we, we were able to smoke on campus too and so some of them they're like about to light their cigarette and they see uh -huh. me they literally stop lighting and take it out and like bow real quick like dude the respect was instant right wow. and i got a haircut and then it was black and no one thought it was green anymore but i mean, oh, once in a while i get it from time to time but it wasn't as obvious yeah so interesting interesting yeah Nice. We'll see. We'll we'll think of something. I really just need to think about the punishment for Speedy. So I'm not. I ain't trying to lose, <laughs> yeah, try to lose man. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> shorter episode. But uh, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we'll we'll talk about some tea next week. We'll talk about some primal reversions next week. And uh, by the time we post next week too. Yeah, next week's episode. By the time you hear it, the event will be live. Yeah. So. We'll try to get those Shadow Alone Night Tales. It should be good. Like I said, um, for a human catcher bug, like I think that Shadow Powder Still Alone Nine Tales, like, is gonna make it really hard for Shadow Charles. I think it's not this is my meta read. I could be wrong. But not only is Powder Still and Volpix gonna be good, I think Lantra's gonna be prevalent too, you know, because it's gonna it's gonna be a check to that uh alone nine tails. Especially mm -hmm. if Glaring Stump is is not as reliable of a check. Yeah. It's gonna make well. It's gonna make life harder for Trevenant. Mm -hmm. It's gonna make Metacham. Uh, Metacham versus Power, uh, Yeah, that's a good point. That's a big one. Which is they need they need to do some checks. Umbreon, Dude, Umbreon is oh. like because because Umbreon's like so safe these days, right? Yeah, but there's not a lot of berries, but that's a good check. I think Lantern stock <sighs> will go up. Dude, I hate I hate that. I, I hate Lantern it too. Because because the and, problem with Lantern it's so polarizing. It's like so like it just plays more into RPS. Because you have no play into grass types, and you're so strong to flyers and like you know, and ice. It's probably gonna make Bastidon stock go up too. I mean, I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to say there, that. But there was only true. one. There it's was only true. one Bastidon in the top sixteen at Liverpool, but I think we could see lots of Basties. Yeah. What What else? Because what else? If you think about Alola Nine Tails, Ice and Fairy, what else? Like hard Reggie Steel without shields. Reggie Steel. Steel. Yeah. So if Reg I, I think is... I think there might be more Reggie Steel than Glen. I don't know. Go I thought there would be more Glen Stump is in Reggie Steel this time around because I thought Pelper yeah. buff would be enough, but it wasn't. Well, Glen Stump if... is so reliable into Lantern. The problem is Lantern could sure. beat Reggie Steel. That is like the scary part. That's, That's why like Lantern yeah. is like so wild. Yeah. I don't know. Best of luck, y'all. Oh, side note. Out of the way. <laughs> side note. I don't oh, recommend this. I don't recommend purifying your Reggie Steel to get return because that's also going to oh, be. Oh, don't option. do that. No, just run don't like do that. A, no, just run don't. Hyper Beam. Dude, dude, if you're doing that, man, you definitely <laughs> didn't listen to this podcast. You wasted that Giovanni radar. Like, I'm just saying, yeah. that's a big no no, right? Because I'm sure at least don't. one person, at least that, one person heard that and they were like, what about purified rage? None of our Battlecast listeners will do that, right? They know what's up. They know the drill. You bank that. You you unequipped it. You bank it for Reggie yeah. Rock or something else. It's not worth it. It's like people that are doing all these Shadow Mewtwo. So like, no hate if you love Shadow Mewtwo. You love Shadow Mewtwo. What mm -hmm. are the odds of getting a hundo Shadow Mewtwo? Right? Like, yes, there's a chance. It's low. It's low, just, and you're not using it for. I mean, you could kind of use in Candle Comb greatly, but it's not great. It's not good for Ultra League. 
it's not even that good for Mass League, I feel like. I feel like you want – it already hits so hard. You want a little bit yeah. more bulk. But even if you do, like, what are the odds you get it? Like, it's just – I know people that have, like, spent a bunch of Shadow Radars on the Mewtwo, and they all regret it. <laughs> I know one person with a Hundo Shadow Mewtwo, and it's Rosemary. Necro? Yeah. Necro. Yeah. Pretty wild. That wild. RNG. Yeah. Hey, I got to give it to someone. But we can't all be Necro, you know. <laughs> um, it's true. Anyway, uh, take our words of advice, you know. Um, but I think that'll be that'll be the one. So you're still going to do the reg reg seal, the shadow reg seal. I didn't convince you one. out of it. No, I'll one. do one. Yeah, I can't. I, I have t- we need to revisit two weeks from now. I need to. I need to see this spread right, and, okay. and we're going to revisit this. And I'm going to ask you, be like, was it worth it? I have two was super radars it? that I've saved. And we typically get one for each takeover. So yeah. even if I do one, I still have two left over. Yeah, but that's just one less, man. For that's the that's my thinking. That's just one less for Red Rock. Mm. But hey, you do you, Speediest Chief. You do you. <laughs> hey, I noticed you, you, saved the, you shaved the soul patch. Yeah, I thought we said yeah. we weren't going to. We were let the, the viewers no, know. No, we I, talked about it. We talked about you, it, but I've already given too much control. It. No. I've already given too much what? control to other people. I think it so looks actually, better at the moment. With, uh, you know, not at the moment before. I asked my fiance what she thought, and she said to get rid of the soul patch. Oh man! Happy fiance, Sorry, Caleb, happy life, man. You, you know you're my boy, but fiance, it's like up here. You know, <laughs> I can't, I can't override that. Well, unless you lose a bet, then that's how you override it. <laughs> <laughs> it's already happened. Maybe the next bet is you shave everything but the soul patch for months. <laughs> oh no, no. Then then I would look like I'm from like a late nineties, early two thousands <laughs> Or maybe maybe next time around we just make you keep a mustache for like two months straight or something. Dude. I mean, I asked Chad if they wanted me to keep the mustache. They said no. So, or you, or next time you do a chin strap. I don't know. We'll see. We, we, we I got a lot oh, of time dude. to think about this, man. We got a lot of time. Look, I'll bleach my hair, whatever. Right? I ain't losing. Right? But we'll, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. That's what I said. Watch out. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. Say it again next time. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, that'll be that'll be it for us. A little bit shorter episode, but appreciate you all for listening as always. And sorry for delay, but next week we should be on time, so it'll be good. Yeah. Anyway, uh, catch you all later, and have a good one. Peace. See ya. Yeah.